This is a painting by um, Dr. Attle. And I had, a, I had somebody asking uh, you know, about certain things inside the painting that, uh, that concerned him. The painting is in uh, really good conditions. The colours are really kind of quite beautiful and uh, fresh. Uh, the painting's done circa 1928, and it's what they call Attle colour. So Dr. Dr. Attle, uh, the painter, he created his own paints. And the base is like a, a petrol plastic. It's a, it's a petroleum-based paint. And what he's done here is the, the surface it's painting on is paper mounted on board. So the paper gets mounted onto board and, uh, and it's sealed so the kind of no, no acids come through, through from the board into the, into the colours and the painting. And so this, that's, and that's what this is? Yeah, that's what you can see back here. You can see the paper back here. And this is basically, you know, um, 19th century academic painting of kind of mounting paper on board and painting this way. And the paint, the, the colour of, um, of the paper looks kind of um, golden almost. So the other thing they would do in kind of this kind of academic painting would be... But that's because he painted it, right? Yeah, he, what he's done is painted the old, the old sheet of paper. Okay. And the reason for that, that is that um, when an artist kind of works on a white sheet of paper, it's very difficult to see the colours and how the colours are coming together. Uh, so, because basically if you put a colour on, on a white sheet of paper, it just, you just get this massive contrast and you can't see it. So to create harmony and put colours together, you start off with a kind of darker, almost neutral base. So that's what he's done here. But it's also allowed uh, some of the paper to still show through, so it becomes almost like uh, like a sunset or sunrise in the back using the colour of the paper. Now, what one person was asking me about is if we kind of bring this up here, you can see this kind of strange kind of almost like a watermark. Yeah. And you can see it here. You can see it here. And he thought there might be kind of you know watermark uh, damages that it got you know water got spilled onto it, but since it's a petrol plastic, the water would not really affect it in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we also look over here by these trees and we see, again, little, yeah. like, little dry marks, but this is because um, on this particular piece, Dr. Attle, uh, with his Attle colors, w watered them down, uh, probably with some kind of uh, mineral spirits so part of it, it would act almost like a watercolour, it's like almost a wash where other parts are kind of more opaque and thicker. Uh, so what's happened is the paint has acted almost like a watercolour. Like when you put water inside water, watercolour pigment and splash of water on, it'll kind of spread out and then dry and you'll have those little rings. So this is just uh, a part, of, um, part of the painting. It's, uh, it's using atoll colour but... It's part of the paint. It's part of the paint, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not like something's being spilt on it afterwards. It's not like the piece is damaged. That makes sense. Other places, if you look up here, mm -hmm. on this white, you can actually see texture. Yeah. So here, you don't, you're not getting these little ringlets because the paint's thicker. So it's not, it's not drying and, and, and kind of bleeding out a little bit. Gotcha. Uh, so it's a very kind of uh, lovely and, and loose painting. Uh, very atmospheric, and uh, Dr. Attle was the one that kind of introduced that kind of broke away from the academic painting. Uh, although the, some of the techniques he had academic, but academic painting, and, and he lived and worked in uh, in Paris for a long time. So more kind of impressionistic. You see, you know, what's happening up here is very kind of fast and uh, creates an atmosphere of clouds moving and the sky. Uh, and so and he made all these paints. He made his own paints uh, called Atle Color, which he was, the formulas he was kind of secretive about. Um, Do people know it now, how to make them? I can, I, with modern technique, techniques, you can kind of, you know, you know, you can kind of do analysis on it and you can kind of work out what, what chemicals and minerals and what's in there yeah. uh, and get the information. But at the time, the artist, I think, was quite secretive about how we put it together. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I say, Sakaris used a lot of petroplastic um, mediums, and he was a big influence on people like Diego Rivera and, Oro uh, and Orozco and Siqueiros yeah. uh, because he brought a lot of the kind of ideas that um, were happening in Europe back to the uh, back to Mexico, this kind of 
going outdoors and painting and not, not painting in the studio and copying an old masters. He was out in the country. Uh, this is a painting of the Valley of Mexico, mm. um, which he was famous for, for, for painting. Uh, his, real, his famous paintings um, are of volcanoes erupting. Yeah. Uh, you've probably seen these with kind of uh, oranges and, you know, um, very expressive strokes of fire and, and boulders, you know, and ash coming from, from volcanoes. This, I'm told uh, by some that lives in Mexico, is a, one of the volcanoes in the Valley of Mexico. Obviously, not active right now, uh, but that's one of the, one of the many volcanoes. Uh, when I fly up from um, Oaxaca to Mexico City, and also when I've driven from Mexico City to Puebla, I've seen some of these volcanoes just with kind of smoke coming out of them. That's cool. Uh, numerous times on the aeroplane. Yeah. And last time I went to Puebla, I saw two different volcanoes with plumes of smoke coming out. Just. And they remind you of Dr. Adel? Yeah, always, always remind me of Dr. Adel. <laughs>